Well, hello, Jake, and, and welcome here. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation uh, in anticipation of our concert uh, on November the 14th that is going to include your uh, beautiful, beautiful work, The Hope of Loving. Um, you are uh, a composer based in, in Minneapolis, and um, this, is, uh, this is a work that we uh, have come to know just recently, but it seems like it's very appropriate for our times today. Mm. And uh, in, in particular, I was struck by something that I, I, I found in your biography as I was uh, thinking about this conversation that we would have, that um, your music is, um, you, you think about your music as having the power to initiate positive change and, uh, and uh, cr you create works that have a, a socially conscious um, element to them. And um, to me, that seems uh, perhaps more important today than it ever has been, in, in at least in recent memory. And I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about um, about what that means to you and, and how you think about your music in, in, in that sort of context. Yeah, well, thanks. It's great to be here. And I'm so excited that you're, you're doing this piece. It's one that's very special to me, so uh, it, it means a lot. Um, so from a very young age, my parents raised my sister and I to to always kind of be in service of other people in some way. Um, if there was someone in our community who needed help, we would bring them dinner or we would volunteer for various organizations, different events, different people. And, and so that from very early, it was instilled in me that part of how we live is to live with generosity to other people that we're all in this life thing together. And, and so then when I started creating music, early on it was a lot of terrible love songs because I knew nothing about love. <laughs> but uh, after, you know, after I started creating music, especially for larger ensembles like choirs and wind ensembles and orchestras, I love the idea of, of a community coming together around an idea, around a question, around a theme. Um, and, and so I, I began to bridge those worlds of service to others and musical artistic expression. And, uh, and so I think that's a big reason why a lot of my music deals with that. I, I really don't like music just for the sake of music, but really I want music to, to be created for the sake of fostering compassion, of telling a common human story, of helping us to understand what someone else might be going through, of posing a, a difficult question or removing a stigma from a certain topic of conversation. And so, yeah, these are all things that, that I find to be important and make the experience of, of rehearsing and performing this music all the more meaningful. Uh, I come from an education background. My undergrad degree in is, is in music ed. And so I'm also very much aware of that rehearsal process and how crucial that is to the experience. So. I want my music to to be really meaningful in the rehearsal process, um, as well as in the concert experience. You know, I, I I think that that's that's very much of what I have in mind when I'm creating. Um, so with a piece like the Hope of Loving, this which very generally is about love, <laughs> but but more so about the the different ways that love is embodied in the way that we live. Um, from from knowing that like the opening lines of we know about love the way the fields know about light mm -hmm. the way the forest shelters us uh to you know this this tenor solo that's kind of humorous asking us you know if you're walking by someone on the street why don't you just smile at them you know why would you look away right. um and then and then digging in a little bit more into those things that maybe prevent us from from loving um, to to the depth of when we can open ourselves and really find that connection with someone else. So so I think it was probably my own way of working all these things out as well as I was creating the piece. That's that's really wonderful, and and you certainly hear that in the music. Certainly, the texts that you chose for the hope of loving uh, resonate with all of those things that you you just said. Uh, as does I think a lot of your other music. I mean, I've come across. Uh, numbers a number of your of your works now that 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 to me um speak to those um those characteristics and, and those elements of as you say generosity compassion um this idea that we're in in this life together and if we're going to get through it we we better we better make the best of it to, together right and and yeah. um so 
I, could you say, you know, a little bit like how does your music um, um, emanate some of those characteristics? Like the the texts, you know, um, obviously are are very closely uh, aligned with with those themes. Mm -hmm. How does your music speak into that? Well, I treat every piece like a research project, and that starts with, you know, for choral music with the text, and mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm trying to find out as much as I can about who wrote it, why they wrote it, when they lived, where they lived, how all of those elements influenced what and how they wrote, um, you know, spending a lot of time with the text. And so when it comes time to creating the music, all, all of the music is, is heavily influenced by what I've learned and extracted from the text itself. And so I really do rely on the text to, to provide a lot of the musical information the form of the piece is based on the yeah, text, great. the rhythm of the words, of the melody, it's all taken, you know, I, I improvise the words singing them until I find something that feels natural yeah. and within kind of the emotional essence, the emotional world that, that the text creates. So, um, so I think musically I'm trying to, to do justice to the words as much as I can within this emotional landscape that I think the words dictate to us. Um, a metaphor I like to use is when I conceive of a work, it's kind of like a painting. And, and so, you know, if you think of the painting Starry Night, uh, which has a very specific color palette and texture mm -hmm. and content and technique, um, you know, you could, you could move some things around in the painting and adjust little things, but it's still going to have the same essence, the same emotional quality mm -hmm. to it. And so when I, when I imagine a piece, it's kind of like that. I'm imagining the painting. And then I, I create everything within that world, right? So everything that I'm, I'm doing is within, within the painting, within the, the world that the, that the writer has, has created really with the text. Um, and then I try to figure out, well, how can I illuminate that through music? That's, that's a beautiful um, analogy to, to a painting and, and being able mm -hmm. to sort of move things around. Well, this, you know, this is still going to be in the painting, but maybe I'll just shift it over a little bit here like and this. It, and and it, it also takes off a lot of pressure of having it to be perfect. You know, <laughs> like, right. <laughs> you don't have to pull down the perfect version right. of, of that piece. You know, things can be shifted around and you can, you can follow certain things as you're creating instead of saying, like, there's only one possible answer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these last eight months, uh, you know, for for the entire world, have have, have changed uh, how all of us do everything in in, in our lives, right? And uh, that includes our choir. You know, we, as you know, we have uh, have just recorded your piece for a concert program that will be streamed online. Something that never occurred to us eight months ago that that, that we would mm -hmm. be doing uh, here, right. you know, at the end of October. Um, and 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 so we're constantly kind of reimagining ourselves and reimagining how how we as a choir can, can reach our audience and, um, and, and why that's important. How has, how has your life changed? I mean, or, or has it, you know, in, in the life of a composer, um, I, I suppose you spend a, a fair amount of your time in kind of solitude and, and quiet and thinking and, and writing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, has, how has, how has these, uh, how have these last eight months or so kind of shaped how you have responded? Yeah, I, in, in normal life, <laughs> I do a lot of traveling uh, for premieres, for guest conducting, for various residencies, um, conferences, things like that. And, and so I, I have lived my life in a way where this travel is the way that I interact with humans <laughs> and, <Right>. I, <laughs> and I make music with other people. Right. And then I come home and I recharge and I create and I've got that alone time that I need you know, in order for that recharge to happen. And so what's been really difficult about this time is I don't have that balance. It's all recharge time, right. which is really difficult. And so I find that it's been, it's been really hard to focus, um, especially because, you know, I, I still have lots of music that I need to write. Um, and the deadlines are there, but they're a little bit more flexible. So right. therefore, my I feel like I can be a little more flexible. Uh, so, and then without having that, you know, that change of being able to go somewhere and then come home and refocus on something, um, it's been, it's been tough, uh, to just kind of live in that one place for a while. 
Yeah. So I'm trying to work through how to do that, especially now with the winter coming uh, and where I'm going to be inside even more probably. <laughs> so that's that's been a challenge. Um, also, there was so much going on in the U.S. Uh, throughout this time. It's been a, a really difficult, challenging uh, point in our in our nation's history, um, especially right here in Minneapolis, which is kind of the the hub of, of a lot of the racial strife that most recently was was happening with the murder of George Floyd and the various riotings that were you know right here in my in my neighborhood. Right. Um, um, you know my bank is destroyed, my post office is destroyed, burn to the ground, um, and so it's. You know that is that is weighing on me too, and, and trying to figure out what what is my role as a human, but also as an artist with a platform, and how can I lift up voices? How can I help change narratives? How can I um, use use this artistic force for good? Um, and so all these things are kind of swirling around and trying to make sense of it all, as well as you know being a part of the global pandemic. So it's definitely a challenge. It's absolutely a, a, a very complex and compl complicated time right now. And as you say, being in Minneapolis, you're sort of at the epicenter of uh, some of the racial unrest um, and, yeah. and injustice that, that um, has taken place and sort of launched uh, a, a greater um, movement uh, that, that is, is necessary, I think, for, for all absolutely. of us to, to, to know about and, and, absolutely. and, and, um, and be part of. Um, yeah, that that's that must must weigh very heavily on you. Not only uh, you know having lost the the ability to sort of freely move and engage with with other musicians as you as you normally would uh, because of the pandemic, but also to have uh, something uh, so global uh, being right on your right on your doorstep um, mm -hmm. uh, outside your windows and and so on. Uh, we've we've even from you know from Canada we think a lot about Minneapolis and and the various places in, in the states that have had unrest and we, we think about our own responsibilities to uh, to each other here in this country um, you know um, and and you know to me that's that's again why why your music is so um, important right now it's so um, you know it has such a, a tangible um, relationship to those those big themes, those big questions, and uh, and exactly why I wanted to to uh, program this piece as sort of the center centerpiece of of, of our program. Um, Hope and Refuge is, is what it's mm -hmm. called, and um, and certainly your, your your work speaks into those things. Mm -hmm. um, I had one other question that I I, I thought I would um, pose to you. Um, you know, the the Hope of of Loving is uh, was commissioned, I believe, by Seraphic Fire. Was that, is that right? The wonderful yeah. uh, uh, choir um, in, in, the, in, in the U.S. in Miami, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I wonder if you could just could you talk a little bit about your sort of commission process? Like, how how do you work as a composer, and how how much of a dialogue is there between the commissioner and the commissionee, and and you know, are 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 they part of speaking into that process, or or do you sort of take an idea and run with it, and and come back with with your your um, your creation or, or what does that look like for you? Every, every project is different uh, and it, it depends on some, some conductors like to be really hands-on and others uh, not as much. Um, sometimes I'm given a theme or you know a concept other right. times it's Jake, just write us a piece. <laughs> um, <laughs> that must be nice. You, uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, sometimes it's nice to have direction. Otherwise, it's like I have no idea what to write. Where, where do I start? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So uh, I I will I will always take suggestions on for for choral music. I will always take suggestions on text, but I will never enter a project in which the text is dictated. Because not not all texts can and should be set to music, and I'm really, really, really picky mm -hmm. with the, with the words that I that I use, um, and so uh, that's that's one aspect. But uh, I, I think I I tend to prefer to just do my own thing, um, and not you know not really send many updates, but just like get the work done because it's. It's such a process of of revealing, or gradually a piece is revealed, um, or a concept is revealed um, over time, and and that's not necessarily a, a speedy process. 
And so as I'm working with the text, you know, it's slowly figuring out what, what portions of a text I'm keeping if I'm creating a, you know, a composite text or if I'm right. taking excerpts from things and, and putting them together, like with The Hope of Loving. Um, with that, I had all these wonderful poems and I, I, you know, found all the ones that I wanted and put them into the computer and printed them all out. And then I, I cut them. And so I had the little chunks and I had them out on my table and like rearranging them and trying to figure out what the best order of the pieces. So I'm like taking things out and putting things in and grabbing things from here and trying to find something else. So, so it's this process of discovery and of honing in on what is the absolute essence of this piece. And, and so I'm not always great at, at wanting to share that part of the process because it's, it's so internal. Sure. And, and I, I need a lot of that processing time before I can come out, emerge and say, okay, here's what it is. Here it is. So, yeah, so I tend to, I tend to like just get doing my thing um, unless I'm collaborating with a, a living writer, which I do quite often, especially with the poet Todd Boss, who is uh, a fantastic, fantastic writer. Mm -hmm. And we've written, gosh, maybe seven or eight things together now. And so it's, I love that because we, we both challenge each other in certain ways. He'll push me, uh, you know, I'll, I'll come to him with a concept and then we'll, we'll kind of keep hashing, hashing it out and figuring out, well, what is it? What about this? Or what if we move this direction? And then he'll send me something, which is like maybe totally different than what I had in mind. But, truly beautiful and stunning and like brought me a different way. So then I have to rethink the painting, you know, that I had created. And uh, so that's, that's a really fun part of the process because it's, you know, it's the, the, the product is greater than the sum of its parts. Right. Uh, and so um, that's a, another really great way to collaborate and, and to create. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, um, the, the OR singers, our, our choir and I have, have, uh, just really loved singing your your hope of loving. It's it's uh, such an inspiring piece and so um, profoundly uh, important right now. The themes that it uh, that it uh, um, brings to mind and brings uh, brings to the center and um, mm -hmm. and we're so pleased that it's been part of really the center part of our our program coming up in November Hope and Refuge. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you very much, uh, Jake, for being part of this this little conversation um, this morning and uh, uh, and for this 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 gorgeous piece that we have uh, to be able to offer our audiences the hope of loving. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to hear it. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs>